Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Uh, today we're going to be painting a uh, square bill 1.5 crankbait. Uh, goal is going to be painting a rusty crayfish pattern. Uh, I've done these in the past uh, with somewhat success, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to start off with our uh, base layer. Uh, base layer, I normally always use the uh, Wicked Colors uh, Opaque White. Uh, this is, again, by Cretex Colors. Um, I've used the uh, the standard Cretex Opaque White and found that it clogs up my airbrush uh, quite a bit. And uh, the Wicked uh, White seems to just spray a little bit better for some reason. Not sure why. Normally do about two layers for the base coat. After that first uh, coat, this gave it a, a quick heat set. Okay, so that looks pretty good for the second coat. Normally when I'm doing base coats like this, I'll normally do two or three lures at a time, so I'm going to go ahead and get this second square bill ready for uh, the next project. So for the first primary color, uh, I normally like using a, uh, again this is another uh, Cretex Wicked color, uh, Detail Burnt Umber. When I'm doing this color, I'm trying to be really light on the trigger. I don't want it to be really, really dark. These stands that I use, I got at Harbor Freight. They can be pretty good when you're using uh, longer, like jerk baits or Zara Spooks, something like that. And you're using both of the hooks, but. On these uh, really small baits, it can be a little cumbersome. It's kind of annoying. Okay, so now that I got a pretty nice light base coat, and got a little bit more touch up right there, real quick. What I'd like to do next is uh, go up on top, again with the same detailed burnt umber, and uh, really darken up the back. One thing you might be able to tell is that when the bait starts getting really uh, glistening, really reflective, that typically means it's time for a heat set before you start putting any more uh, more paint on there or else it's going to run. Okay, I think that's uh, dark enough for us.
Back to the old Ritz. Okay, uh, next color we're going to be using here is another Wicked Colors. I've really, really come to like uh, the Wicked Colors. They are a bit more expensive than the normal Cretex, but uh, definitely worth the money. Uh, a lot easier to work with it, too. Uh, this one is a Detail Moss Green. And we're going to be focusing on kind of the head and the underbelly with this color. The other nice thing about these Wicked Colors is they have a little BB inside their uh, containers. Makes uh, shaking them up a lot faster. You'll notice that I... Uh, Always try to spray, uh, do a test spray before uh, committing to uh, spraying the bait. I have uh, learned my lesson the hard way a few times with that. Uh, you all may also notice what I normally do is I'll uh, spray downwards before actually going to the bait. I'm using a, a Iwata Neo. Uh, sometimes they'll uh, splatter on the uh, initial, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but just the initial paint spray. Uh, so I'll start down and then this kind of slowly ease my uh, pointer finger backwards to uh, initiate that spray of the paint. It gives you a lot more control. So ultimately the kind of the goal here is uh, just kind of blend the two colors together. Uh, there's really no hard breaks typically that I see on the, uh, the rusty crayfish in the river by me. It all just kind of blends together. Uh, I do like keeping the head a little bit darker green, whereas the rest of the body more is a brownish green. So one of the things I like doing, uh, once kind of blending those two uh, colors together, is I'll take a, uh, a Cretex uh, transparent, transparent being the key uh, type of paint here, and uh, light brown, and uh, I'll kind of help blend those two colors uh, together just a little bit more. The nice thing about the transparent is uh, it really lets some of that uh, detail moss green still shine through. All still while uh, darkening it up.
So the last step uh, that we're going to be doing here is adding uh, the segments of the shell. Uh, I normally like using uh, just standard opaque black. Um, sepia can also be another kind of good alternative, but black is just a lot faster. And, I, I, and this kind of a darker setup, I think it stands out just a little bit more. I like having that contrast. So uh, what I've done is I just have an old piece of cardboard here, pretty thin, uh, and cut uh, some round bends in it. I also have a, uh, a few straight runs on it. Uh, segments are definitely one of my weak points still that I'm still working on perfecting. Uh, the one thing that I've uh, started doing is I start with the back. And uh, the important thing with starting with the back is that way you can get the segments lined up on both sides. So uh, typically, we'll do, we got to rearrange this guy. typically aim to have uh, about three segments so I'll lay the flat uh, piece of the back just kind of like that and then I'll spray downwards very lightly and that kind of gives me my starting point for the first segment And then uh, just line up the template with that line that you just created. And again, spraying towards the template is uh, typically what I recommend. That looks pretty good. The other thing that can kind of trip you up is uh, when you flip the bait around, you want to definitely make sure that you're going to get your, your angles right. Well, that one did not line up quite right. Unfortunate, but you got to work with uh, what you got. So, move on to the second segment. Okay, so there are our segments. 
Uh, again, uh, really not happy with uh, lining up with that one. Really uh, pays to uh, slow down, make sure you've got your stuff lined up. That is an example of me not doing that. But it will still catch fish. Won't be a huge deal. I'm sure the fish won't mind. The last little thing that I like doing is making the tail kind of black. So, there we go. One thing you may have noticed in uh, the template, I've got little notches cut out uh, to help kind of make that uniqueness to it. Uh, still, that's one of the things I'd like to refine and make uh, nicer templates. Because um, just having these three or four notches in there just isn't really quite enough. Uh, but the overspray does really help kind of make it look nicer as well. That comes for the fun part of trying to clean out a black color out of your spray brush. Anytime I ever use black, uh, using the media brush cleaner is a necessity, in my opinion. Learned this little trick uh, watching somebody's YouTube at some point. Uh, with the airbrush cleaner, um, if you clog the nozzle, just kind of place it over a uh, cloth like that. And then just give it a little bit of juice. It will uh, back, kind of black, back flush itself, which seems to help. So what we're gonna, gonna be doing next is getting ready to uh, get the eyeballs and uh, clear coat in this guy. I have a bad habit of mixing up my clear coat uh, before I take the masking tape off, which when you're using a uh, two ton, 30 minute epoxy, uh, all the time in the world counts. So having to take 30 seconds to undo your tape can really make a difference between clear coat working out well and not so I normally try to get into the habit now of taking the tape off before I put the eyeballs on and uh, I'm just using normal masking tape on this when I'm using a uh, or painting larger lures with larger bills. Uh, I use uh, just painter's tape that I've got left over from some house projects. It doesn't really seem to make a difference. Really the biggest difference is making sure that you have a, uh, a really tight seal on that lip. So when I'm doing uh, crayfish patterns, I normally like to use these uh, red uh, I guess reptile looking eyeballs so I always put a little bit of uh, super glue in the eye socket to make sure those eyes don't come off typically I'm using a uh, toothpick to apply these eyeballs it works out pretty well but uh, I actually just picked up an exacto knife uh, a few days ago so I'm gonna give that a go these eyes are six millimeter eyes not exactly the right size for this blank but they are the closest thing I've got
I can safely say using this X-Acto knife is so much easier than using a toothpick. Okay, and then I'll uh, heat set the eyes to get that uh, crazy glue to dry a little bit faster. So for a clear coat, I'm using Devcon Home uh, two part, two ton, crystal clear, 30 minute epoxy. Uh, they come in these and they've got little measuring marks on them. I don't ever use those. I know you're supposed to be really precise with your clear coat, but I just wing it. Normally what I'll do is get these to uh, just kind of prime themselves, kind of get in the nozzle. And then once they're at the nozzle, I'll just apply equal pressure and just kind of watch uh, it stream down and kind of judge it all based on that. And mix it around real good. These square bills don't take too much. And I just use really cheap disposable paint brushes that you find at Walmart for like, it's like 10 cents a brush. Paint that straight on there. Whenever you're using 30 minute epoxy, uh, generally recommend getting it done in about two or three minutes because it will start getting uh, really kind of tacky and uh, a lot more difficult to uh, get it even on the bait. You may notice I just paint right over the, uh, the eye holes. I, uh, I'll clear those up with a toothpick uh, once I put these on the drying rack. Yeah, you can see that eyeball floating around a little bit. Either it didn't use enough crazy glue or that crazy glue didn't get enough time to dry. Uh, just gotta be a little bit careful, just get it back in the spot. That epoxy will dry and set it in place. Shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, everything's looking good there. I'll, uh, I'll then heat set this on low. Uh, I know a lot of guys will like take a blowtorch to this to get in the air bubbles out. I do not have a blowtorch and I don't really trust a blowtorch on these, so... That's why I just kind of stick to the blow dryer. It always pays to double check and triple check. Thought I was good there, but it looks like I had a, a dry spot in the back. Uh, whenever I'm using the, the hair dryer on the clear coat, I use the uh, the low setting. Uh, it still pumps out the same amount of heat, it's just not as fast. Uh, I've tried using the high setting and it just actually pushes the, uh, the clear coat around on the bait, which is not something I want. Again, uh, I'll take a toothpick, just kind of insert it in the eye holes, 
and that will just clear up any excessive uh, amounts of clear coat. And then onto the drying rack. So this is the final product. Uh, I let this dry for about a day. Uh, actually, it was a few days. I've uh, been a little busy lately, but this is the final product. I uh, went ahead and put uh, size six hooks on here with uh, six millimeter split rings. Um, turned out pretty good. It's a little bit darker than I was uh, kind of anticipating, but uh, it will definitely uh, catch fish. Looking forward to using it. Uh, thanks for stopping by my channel again, and uh, see you next time.